Oh man, there's nice girth on this baby. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a while back, you saw I had a video where I was wrapping the steering wheel right here with that red stitch leather that I got on eBay for like 30 bucks. So what I'm gonna do today is install it onto the IS300. It's a pretty easy install. I think there's only like two little screws that keep the airbag on. The airbag comes off and it's just that one center screw. You gotta just make sure that you line it up correctly. The teeth are pretty fine on here so you can easily misalign uh, that and then have your steering wheel kind of off to the left or the right a little bit. So today we'll go ahead and install that and we'll go through that in detail. So you can see on the IS300, it's a pretty straightforward removal of the airbag. So you got these T30 Torx bits on either side. There's not even a cover or anything to worry about on this car. Once you shoot that off, you can just take the airbag out, unplug it, and then you can release that center bolt, which is like a 17 millimeter, I believe. So I'm just gonna shoot that off with a impact wrench just to make it easy where I don't shift the steering wheel too much. So we'll go ahead and shoot this off. I'm just using an impact driver right now just to shoot this guy off. And you really should unplug your airbag or your power. I do this all the time and it's uh, YOLO, like I said before when I was doing this airbag on the other car. But to take it out, it's pretty easy. And the screws actually have their own retainers in there so they don't go anywhere. So once you do that, you just pop the airbag off. So as you're unscrewing the airbag screw, so you see right here on the steering wheel, the new steering wheel, uh, it's got the screw in it. When you unscrew it, it still kind of stays in there. So there's a little bit of it that still hangs into the actual airbag. So you gotta actually either pop the whole screw out where it's being held by the retainer right here. So you see right here, it's much further out than you can screw it onto the car. I need to be able to take a little flathead screwdriver and pop it out so it clears and I can pull the airbag out. Maybe the easiest way is just to pry the little plastic in here. Yep. Pry the little plastic on mine and it pops the screw out. And the airbag pulls right out and then just Unplug it. Put that off to the side. So you got the steering wheel out now. And then we could unscrew the 17 millimeter in the middle. So inside the car, so here's what we got. So we got the airbag wire, and then we got the harness here that has the old up and down buttons for the transmission which over here I've got basically the manual steering wheel that I don't have that, so I won't be using that wire harness. And then we got the cruise control right here. I'm gonna end up reusing and transplanting the cruise control from this steering wheel onto my new one. This one did come with a cruise control, but it keeps on, the little back piece keeps on popping off on it, so I don't trust it. I think it's kind of broken. So I just use the one that I know is good on my car. Just make sure everything's centered in the way you like it before you shoot that thing off. And then even before you pull out the wheel, you gotta make sure everything's back in the position you want it so you get the new wheel on straight. All right, so it's a 19 millimeter, so I've got my 19 millimeter impact. Just get it in here. Hold your steering wheel steady and just shoot it off. Comes off pretty easily. Didn't even need the impact, but I just did it just so I didn't have to worry about shoot, breaking it off. So the next thing is just trying to, trying to get it loose. Ideally, if you had a puller, you could just use a little puller. There's two little things on the side and you can pull it from the center. All right, so I got my trusty little puller. Is like one of the best tools that I hardly ever use. I've got the screws that cam comes with this puller, so what you wanna do is just line up right in the center here, the thing. Should unplug the horn so it doesn't keep on going off on me. All right, so the horn, every time it gets grounded, it, it rings, so. Right. What I should do is unplug the harness. So the harness right here is just a single harness. Just squeeze it and pull out and we'll leave the airbag harness right here even though this thing comes out I don't need it to come off the clock spring I'll just leave it right there so I'll tuck this guy below here so it's out of the way and then line this guy up 
center hole, hole and then just thread this thing in. And this Harbor Freight tool that I got, you could probably get on Amazon for just as cheap as Harbor Freight anyways, if you don't have a Harbor Freight near you, but it comes with washers and all that, but I forgot to grab them. I don't think I need them. So you just get it lined up. Okay. And then turn it until it pops. Oh, there. And then once it pops, you're good. You just un unbolt these two guys back out and then pull the steering wheel out. Uh, before you pull it out of this teeth, just make sure that it's centered the way you want it. So when you put the new one in, it doesn't go out of place. So, so yeah. That, and be careful not to pull the clock spring out either. So just uh, keep the clock spring in the on the hub because you don't want to pull that thing out and mess that up either. So just leave that back here with our airbag harness. And just there it is. So yeah, this guy's out now, so I'm gonna transplant the cruise control over to my other wheel, and then we'll put it back in. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just take out the Phillips screws for the cruise control, and just shoot those things out. The one thing I noticed I had to do is, uh, since the two side screws here are pretty much permanent in here, I gotta, well they're not permanent, I mean the screws here, I could take them off, and then the, the back side, uh, what I want to do is just just pop the wires out of this harness so I can just transfer this harness over to the new steering wheel and just leave the, the wires behind on this wheel or just transfer it on the other cruise control and just sell it or whatever I'm going to do with this. So what you're going to have is just electrical taped onto the two harnesses. The one harness is the cruise control, the other one's for the shifter up and down buttons. I did notice some of the guys that wrap this where they ended up just wrapping over these buttons. They uh, redid the back buttons because you still have the back buttons here. So these are both ups on, on this wheel. You can rewire them for one up and one down if you want to keep that. If you're an automatic car that doesn't want the front buttons for the cleaner look. Yeah, so this guy, I've got a white wire and a red wire going in here and then the other wires are going back here. I'm assuming they're for that but they, for some reason it doesn't line up the same as the other cruise control that I got, the other cruise control I got had all the wires coming into this side, so this is odd. Well, I guess one of these is a ground wire, but the yellows and all go in here, so maybe the wiring is a little different from the RAV4 steering wheel that I got for, versus this one. So I just got my multimeter just to test these uh, wires out. So I tested the switch I got from the RAV4, so the wiring is correct, so on the RAV4, or any other non uh, up and down Tiptronic steering wheel, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have three wires. So you have the blue wire, which is the ground wire. It's gonna be on the furthest pin over here, right? And then you got the middle wire, which is the red wire that goes inside here on the red. And then the white and black wire is the ground. So here the, the ground goes straight to there. So that it only uses those, those three pins on this side. On the automatic steering wheel that we took out of the IS, it's got the same blue wire for the ground. It's got the same red wire that goes into the cruise control. And then it's got a yellow wire. So the yellow wire is actually routed back and it's actually the ground wire. So right now, if I measure the continuity on this white wire right here and this yellow wire in the same position, it beeps, so that means it's on the same node. For the Tiptronic, you got a black wire and a red and blue. The red and blue share the same pin together and then the black and white share the same pin. So I'm gonna test this last one to see if it's on the same node, if it's the ground wire for the thing. So it's not on the same node there and it doesn't share either one of those. So somewhere in this wiring, it all loops back to that ground. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take the, the Phillips off and see what I can do as far as figuring out this wiring. I've got this all out. I go ahead and mess with the harness now. So I figured out the wiring a little bit better now. So each one of the switches uses a yellow and the yellow is actually ground. So the ground wire from this guy goes through and I think it just solders inside this loom somewhere and it goes out to these yellow. So each switch has a yellow, which is ground. And this has a ground and it goes back to here, which is a yellow, which is the ground, right? So the up on the back side 
uses a blue and a red wire, and the blue and red wire goes through the same hole over here, which is the second one over, and then the down, which is the front buttons, right here, they, got, they use a white and a black, and it goes into the first plug on this end right here. If you ever want to just rewire your back buttons to up and down, you could just swap those two wires on either end and then you just switch it for up and down if you want to stay automatic but have the clean front, uh, no buttons on the front look. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to hack this up and uh, use, just keep this piece so that way I can still put the rest of it back together using the RAV4 one on the old steering wheel. So what we're going to do is try to pop these wires out of here. This is that RAV4 one that I got from the other manual steering wheel. So what I'm using is just this little pick kit I have and I'm just popping the cover on the back of this thing off so I can pull the wires out of here. Just carefully pop the back side of it here off. It allows you to get into the pins and then you can pop the pins off and then just pull the wires straight out. Into there, just pull the, it's just a little lock tab. Pull the first wire out, second wire out. You got, I'm going to reuse that plug, I'm going to pull the one out of the IS over here and then I'm just going to make new connections for the ground wire and then I'll redo it. Reuse that one because uh, this one's a little bit older, the thing was popping out, I just got to JB weld it back on this one and then the steering wheel should be good. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to cut the ground wire. And I'm just gonna solder into the other wire and then just make my own new plug on this side. So I got this thing all put back together. So this is the one that the original IS one that I transplanted over to this harness so you can see that I basically got the new wire ground wire into there with the thing plugged up so I'm good there and then I attached that RAV4 one that I had onto here and I tapped in the ground wire plugged it in and I've got this for the old steering wheel back I just need to do a little quick fix on here because this thing's been popping out because there's a little nub here that's kind of worn down on here that won't keep it in, so I'm gonna just JB weld that. Luckily on the design for the newer one, which is the IS one, they put a screw there, so you don't have that issue with it with the popping out. So we'll go ahead and put the wheel back together now. So we'll go ahead and just stick this guy right through the hole, get the screws back, and then just screw that in, and get this tucked away over here. Plugged up the horn. So we'll go in the car now and install this baby. So we're back in the car. We'll just go ahead and tuck this in here. Pretty easy reinstall. Just like I said earlier, make sure you align it, the teeth in correctly and get the wheel to sit where you need it to sit. So you're not off center. So like right now, if I, I could feel it. Yeah, the teeth, like if I, if I go off one tooth going that way, it's pretty obvious that it's off center. Right there, I think I'm pretty much centered. And then if I go, yeah, if I go next one, it's way off. So yeah, you just want to get it in there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really hard to screw this up. So, yep, so I'm in. So I want to go ahead and just tighten the bolt down. as much as you can. I don't know what the torque spec with this of this is. I'll post it down for those 
that are interested, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. Just make sure it's fully tight. Plug that guy in, make sure everything's working. Make sure the horn works. This little thing right here that kind of floats, what it is is it's just isolated from the ground, right? So when you put the airbag in, the back of the airbag Right here, the back of the airbag actually grounds it. These little four points right here, or these two metal sides right here, actually touch the things on here, and that's what makes the uh, contact. So the horn and everything works. I tested it just by taking this wire straight to ground, and it worked. So now I just go ahead and just plug the airbag back in, and we'll go finish the install. So the two side screws, if you put them in the hole or the little holders, just go ahead and press it in and then tighten it up with a T30. That's tight. So everything works. So we're good, installed. Yeah, this is pretty nice girthy. All you guys that like that girth, we got it. Another step in the manual swap. Eventually I'll find a transmission and uh, we'll do a manual swap. I'm slowly collecting parts. So looking at closer at this, the fitment on this wrap is on point. Look at how the gaps are perfect on the edges here. The, the one down here, the gaps are nice and clean and it's not as fat as some of the ones I've seen online. So pretty happy with this wrap and just the feel of it. That's one of the main things I was worried about how the airbag would fit along the edges, but I'm pretty happy with the way that this ended up being. Looks pretty good. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this quick episode on getting that steering wheel swapped out. As you can see, I was a little bit extra on what I did by uh, swapping out the cruise control for the one that came with the IS versus the one that came with this old steering wheel I got from the junkyard. I, I wanted to make sure it worked and it lasted, and at least the one I knew on the car worked. As you can tell, that. The install is pretty easy as long as you have the right tools. I think the hardest part was getting that puller, uh, which I wasn't expecting uh, when I pulled that thing from the junkyard. I just uh, whacked the hell out of it and it popped loose. But uh, on here, I used the puller just to make it a little bit easier. But anyways, I, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel to keep up with all my different little projects I've been doing with the IS300, the IS250, or my minivan, go ahead and subscribe to your channel and I'll talk to you guys next time. Don't, 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 stop.